What's going on everyone, it's Griffin here, and in today's video, we're gonna be covering two stocks to watch for the month of June 2021. Over the past couple of months, the equity markets have been seeing quite a bit of volatility, especially in certain industries, along with some capital rotation out of some industries and into others, making the entire process of selecting stocks and even just adding some to your watch list potentially challenging. As always though, over the past month, I've been doing quite a bit of research on stocks that I do own and that also I have on my watch list. And based on current financials and price points, I think that the two stocks we're about to look over right now are at least worth adding to your watch list. I do also wanna make this clear that this isn't necessarily a stocks to buy right now video. Like a lot of viewers tend to think that these videos are, rather this is a discussion of these companies based on their current financials as well as price points right now. So before you jump down to the comments, and comment down the two stocks, I would really encourage you to watch the video through its entirety and see what I have to say about each one. And of course, everyone's situation is going to be vastly different. So make sure to conduct your own research also about these companies before adding them to your portfolio. And before we jump into today's video, I want to take a quick second to thank today's video sponsor, which is Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a free daily business newsletter that will keep you up to speed with all of the latest and most relevant information about the world of business and investments. I've personally been using Morning Brew for months now, and it's one of the first things I look at in my morning routine. I typically try to stay off my phone in the mornings, but Morning Brew truly is a great way to consume business and finance news in only a couple of minutes, so that's why I love it. For example, just yesterday, I quickly got up to speed with the highlights from Apple's virtual keynote, where I learned that once again, Apple is going to continue focusing on privacy for their users. They'll be adding on-device speech processing for Siri, extra private browsing on Safari, and the ability to disable tracking pixels in email, which is game changer for privacy functionality. Over the past months, I've honestly been incorporating just reading through Morning Brew's daily newsletter into my morning routine, and I really enjoy the format of how they deliver the content. So if you're interested in a fun and interactive way to get your daily dose of business and investment news, then make sure to check out the first link down in the description where you can sign up for Morning Brew very easily using your email exclusively. It only takes a matter of seconds. All right, so with that said, let's jump right into the first stock to watch for the month of June, and that is Alibaba. If you managed to catch my recent video covering macroeconomic catalysts for emerging markets, which appears to be a really promising up and coming facet of the equity markets over the next 10 years, by the way, check that video out if you haven't already, but you probably noticed that Alibaba was one of the main holdings in an emerging market ETF that we covered. And quite simply, that's because Alibaba is China's largest e-commerce provider, representing roughly 60% of the total retail e-commerce sales for the country and 8.4% of global retail e-commerce sales in 2020, which is massive. In fact, China has the largest e-commerce market in the world, representing just under 25% of their total retail sales in consumer goods as of 2020, and over 710 million digital buyers in that country alone, making it once again the largest population of digital buyers on the planet. These are massive figures and should only continue to grow dramatically over the next decade as more and more Chinese citizens gain access to the internet and start using online e-commerce services such as Alibaba. For comparative purposes, e-commerce in the United States represents only 14% of their total retail sales, so we can see that e-commerce penetration in the Chinese market is already far greater. What's also really impressive about the Chinese e-commerce market is the sheer volume that they experience. Taking a look at this chart, over here we have Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and now Prime Day, which represent the three largest single day sales in the United States. But these are small fish compared to the behemoth that is China's Singles Day. Take a look at the amount of gross transaction volume on this single day in China. Yes, this was in 2019, but even in 2020, this accounted for 75 billion Billion US dollars doubling last year's sales and that's in one single day. Regarding Alibaba stock though, this is a company that's been hit hard over the past couple of months, especially considering the underlying growth that this company has been experiencing over this same period of time. 
When taking a look at their stock chart, this becomes evident in that their stock is down roughly 32% since it reached all-time highs of $319 back in October of 2020. And since then, many events have led Alibaba holders to shed off their shares, driving down prices. Notably, the suspension of Baba's fintech branch in November, repeated missed sales targets, and then also anti-monopoly rules put in place by Chinese regulators. These are all contributing contributing factors against bullish movements for BABA stock. And since then, while there have been some limited price expansions, well, the stock still remains down significantly. And I wouldn't say that it's undervalued by any means, but it does have a price to sales ratio of right around 25X right now, which is still very high for most industries and most companies. But comparing that to American e-commerce providers, this is roughly half or even less than half of the price to sales valuation that those other companies are fetching. And even when we compare this to Alibaba's own historic price to earnings values, this is significantly lower than what the company has fetched in previous years. Let's now take a look at the most recently reported quarterly earnings of Alibaba. Revenues for the quarter were $187.395 billion, which is up 63.9% over same quarter last year. Honestly, Baba's revenue growth over the past five years has been nothing short of phenomenal and is the reason why it is the largest e-com player in China. In fact, the company has significant projected annual revenue growth over the next couple of years as they continue to expand their e-commerce business along with their other business lines such as cloud computing and fintech to capture payments on their own platform. The company's balance sheet is also really solid with current assets of 597.726 billion and current liabilities of only 358.16 billion giving them a current ratio of 1.66x, which is quite nice. The company's total ratio is even better as they maintain a high quantity of investments, although their goodwill is very high and that's not an asset that I particularly like to see. Nonetheless, common stock equity is increasing nicely year over year. All things considered, Alibaba is a company that has an extremely nice track record and over the past five years, they have an annualized average earnings growth of around 29%, which is extremely nice to see. And they've also been showing a nice growth rate in terms of their top line revenues of around 46% annually. Average analyst ratings on this stock are at $301, which would represent a very nice 37.7% upside over the next 12 months. So yes, there definitely has been an increased amount of regulatory scrutiny for Alibaba over the past couple of months, which has weighed down the market price for this company. But considering this company's underlying financial growth over the past couple of years, coupled with their projected growth, as well as their current market price, share price that is, I really think that Alibaba represents one of the nicest opportunities for investment over the next 5-10 years in emerging markets. I'm incredibly bullish on e-commerce as a whole. That should come as no surprise to anyone watching this. For example, I hold multiple shares of Amazon stock and I plan on holding them for decades to come as I truly believe that is one of the most impactful companies in the world, but in regards to the emerging market sector, well, Alibaba represents a massive opportunity. They're one of the top players in the e-commerce space over there, and with the macroeconomic growth that they're experiencing over in China and other emerging markets that Alibaba services primarily, I really think that this is a nice opportunity that you should at least be adding to your watch list. With that said, the company does still remain relatively expensive from a price-to-earnings standpoint, not in relation to other comparables that we looked at earlier in terms of their own historic PE and other competitors, but even still a PE ratio of 25x is not cheap by any means. And this is also not a stock that I would see making a short term gain in. This really would be a longer term play, probably at least three years to five years or even longer, because this is a type of stock that's going to benefit greatly from the expansion of a Chinese GDP, as well as increased amount of e-commerce consumption in that company that can definitely take years to materialize. 
All right, moving on to the second stock that we'll be covering in today's video. It is Corsair Gaming, ticker symbol CRSR. Now, this is a company that I have covered a couple of times on the channel previously. I am a shareholder, and in more recent news though, the company's stock performance has been quite underwhelming, even considering their really great recent earnings report. The esports and at-home gaming markets are already massive and ever-growing. This is something that we covered quite extensively in those videos previously speaking about Corsair Gaming and why I'm bullish on this company right now, but also over the next five to 10 years. Uh, gaming is actually the quickest growing facet of the entertainment industry as a whole. And I like to invest in companies that are poised for growth uh, based on their own growth and financials, but then also that are positioned within an industry that's experiencing massive growth levels right now and over the next five to 10 years really. All right, so let's take a look at Corsair's stock chart because as mentioned, quite sluggish price movements for this stock over the past couple of months. Similar to Alibaba, the stock is down just under 40% actually since the 52 week highs of $51.37 a share, which is significant. And as we'll be looking at shortly, I don't think this company's financials necessarily warrant this type of sell off. Since March though, prices have basically been flat with little to no movement whatsoever. And the company's four looking price to earnings ratio is around 15.5x right now, which is quite nice and a price to sales ratio of only 1.5x. And that right there is one of the reasons why I'm a shareholder of this company. I think they're showing a relatively nice value in relation to their growth levels. Speaking of underlying financial growth for this company though, let's take a quick peek at their most recently reported Q1 earnings. So in Q1 2021, the company reported revenues of 529.4 million, which for Q1 is really impressive, considering the fact that this is just below Q4 2020 figures with Black Friday and Christmas shopping within that quarter. Year over year, that's growth of 71.75%, which really shows that this company is on the right growth trajectory for success. Gross profit also increased for the quarter and Corsair has been posting positive net income over the past year's quarters, which is nice to see. I also like the fact that their operating cash flows both in this quarter and in 2020 have been relatively substantial. And for this reason, they're able to maintain positive free cash flow figures. Corsair's balance sheet is also quite decent for a hardware company with a current ratio of 1.42 and a total ratio of 1.57. Shareholder equity has more than doubled over the past year and I think Corsair's financial position is adequate. Taking a look at projected revenue and net income growth, Corsair is an exciting growth company despite short-term market values. By 2025, total revenues are projected to be just under 3.5 billion, but honestly, I think that Corsair is going to reach this value much sooner. In fact, forecasted annual earnings growth is also at 21.8%, which for a company that's focused on growth remains quite high and above the industry average. Now, analysts also have an average price target of $50 per share for Corsair at a 57% upside, which I believe is very doable for this company if they are able to maintain their growth momentum, which is showing no signs of slowing down. So I'm well aware of the fact that for many individuals who might be following a CRSR as a result of me speaking about this stock on my channel, well, this might be an underwhelming position in maybe your portfolio or your watch list, but really based on this company's underlying growth, I have no doubt that this company's stock is going to follow as the company does end up posting better and better figures over the coming year or so. As mentioned, I've been a shareholder of this stock for around five months now, and as this stock has been going down in value and staying somewhat flat, I have been dollar cost averaging, lowering my overall cost basis on the company. Now to a point where I'm pretty much at right around $31 average price point. And that is something that I'm comfortable with for this company because I really do think that based on the underlying financials and the overall company and industry growth for uh, Corsair, this is going to be a stock that will reach above $50 per share over the next year to year and a half. That's just my opinion though. Uh, so yeah, definitely do your own 
own research, but for anyone who has been following this stock as a result of me speaking about it on my channel, well, just stay in there. I'm in the same boat right now, uh, but I think it will do well over the next couple of years. So that pretty much wraps it up though for today's video, quickly covering two stocks that I think you should be adding to your watch list for the month of June. I think they're both showing very nice value right now relative to their historic price points as well as industry peers, and they are both showing massive levels of growth. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like. It really helps the channel out. And also consider subscribing and hitting the bell button to be notified of new and upcoming investing content. If you're also new to stock market investing, make sure to check out the links down below. You can open up a well simple trade account. You'll get $25 for free when you open and fund your account with $100 initially. And you can also check out my full 60 video lecture investing course where you'll go from literally knowing nothing about the stock market to being well versed in the different areas areas of retail investing and having your own portfolio constructed for your needs as an investor. And then last but not least, make sure to check out Morning Brew if you're interested. There's a link down in the description. So on that note, thanks a lot for watching today's video and I will see you in the next one.